10 rounds of boxing scheduled for a world title eliminator and the vacant WBC Continental America's Super Lightweight Championship. Introducing you first, on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing light blue trunks, hailing from Trelau, Chubut, Argentina. He weighed in at 138 and three quarter pounds, and his hard hitting record stands at 30 wins, two losses, one no decision, with 28 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard hitting WBC number four ranked super lightweight in the world. World. Introducing Lucas Matisse. Most people that know me know I'm not big on hyperbole. I'm not big on making predictions. I think this could be a fight of the year candidate. <clears throat> Berto Soto in 2010, no, 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 no. the winner of the fight of the year, what took place when he fought both Zab Judah and Devin Alexander. Round one's important to Matisse. Uh, Soto's getting off to a little bit quicker start, and Matisse has been known to start slowly. And very important, Soto requested that this be a 10-round fight instead of a 12-round fight, and Matisse acquiesced to it. And I would think, because in the Judah fight, he wanted, or the Devin Alexander fight, he wanted a 12 so he could get him later. I'm surprised Matisse acquiesced so easily to that. Matisse, though, with very heavy hands. Second time, he pulls Soto's head down. Pretty good job, too. Not so, to see you do that, Alex. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to get Matisse to do one. <laughs> you know, th this has been a good round for Umberto Soto. It, it's what he wanted, but there's that nice hook by Matisse. But a very active round for Soto. Because, you know, we don't have a number one contender here. Now, Soto moving his hands to start the second round. Matisse expects him to box mm. early. Now Soto stepping in. When Umberto Soto is sharp, and he's sharp right now, he is a handful. Now, now Matisse, what do you do? What should your strategy be, especially since he doesn't have as much time, only 10 rounds? That's his strategy, yes, you're right, Gus. Get him against the ropes. But Soto wheeled off those ropes and got his distance, and now he is wailing away with those combinations. Looks like that right hand may have hurt him up, Soto. Now Matisse trying to let his hands move, using the free hand inside. And the end of round two. Whoa. Soto from Mexico, Matisse from Argentina, straight right hand in the midsection, backs up Soto. And that's what Matisse, Soto is boxing, he's being a boxer puncher, but when he goes to the ropes there and gets whacked with those body shots, that's where Matisse wants to make something happen. You can feel this fight shifting slightly. Matisse is getting his rhythm. Soto is not moving. Matisse, another right hand, square on the chin. Matisse trying to close the distance. Has let his hands go in the last two rounds. After a slow start, now Soto trying to dig with the left hook. Uppercut left hook by Matisse, grazing. Wow. Oh, man. Straight right hand connecting Matisse. Here we go. In LA. I told you, this was going to be division. The overhand right from Matisse is getting there much more in this round. Oh, nice left hook getting through. By Matisse. Three punch combination, actually five punch combination by Soto. Beautiful. Five seconds remaining in the third. And they are dancing in LA. Ooh, very good left hook follow. By a left hand to the body by Soto. Both fighters, Al, sitting on their punches yeah. early and often here. You're right. They're getting, they're pronating their punches. They're getting power in them. And you look at how close that is in power punches. Big uppercut by Matisse. But you can see the tenor of this fight and the way it's going. These men are just both. Left hook by Matisse gets through. And then a beautiful right by, uh, by a Soto as well. These men fight 12. Oh, Soto. 
stumbling. Oh, that right hand hurt him. Left hook. Now underneath for Matisse. Solo, solo, soto. One of the important things that Matisse is doing is not forgetting to go to the body. He's in against a 32-year-old who's been in a lot of wars. Abner 24-0-1 from Montebello, California. Local kid who we are very excited about at Showtime. Okay, stop. Great no, 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 fighter. No, no, stop, stop. Thank you very much for joining us. What do you think thus far? Uh, these two men. My pleasure. Great to be here. And uh, what can I say, man? This is a great fight. It's uh, it's barely the fifth round. Joseph Egbeko. Both men doing what they do well. You know, Soto using his hand speed and Matisse using his power and his uh, his body punching. I think they're both doing their they're sticking to their game plan. Uh, Soto is a great technician, great fighter, but Matisse is. Abner, you are a body puncher yourself, and Matisse in this fight here in the fifth has delivered a lot of left hooks to the body on Soto. When does it really start paying dividends when you continue to go to the body on your opponent? Definitely after the sixth round, I mean it's... Right uppercut. There's another left hook to the body. Look at the deep breathing by Soto. Mouth open. Left hook. Oh my. Matisse again, heavy punching. Matisse is the best. Left hook. Looping right hand. Another left hook. Another right hand. And Soto is hurt. And he goes down with the right hand. Can he get up? Wow. Matisse. Okay, come here. Come Soto. An overhand right will be the big one. There's the punch that started the trouble for Soto. And that's the signature punch for Matisse. And yet another one sends him back. Then he was able to land yet a third. And had that third not been able to land, Soto might have been able to weather that at least to get through the round. But the third one landed. And when you're hit with three straight power punches from Lucas Matisse, you go down. But for a couple of glitches on the scorecards, Lucas Matisse would probably be undefeated right now, and some would argue should be undefeated, uh, saying that he beat Judah and Alexander. Raul Caiz sent him back to the corner after that, um, but he would not be able to answer the bell. Again, we take a look at the overhand rights by Matisse. He knew that Soto was in trouble, and he was able to get him down. Soto would beat the count, but Raul Caiz knew that they were at the end of the round, and so he sent him to the corner uh, where Soto's people hoped that one minute would give him enough uh, time. But, Evner, as we look at it again, these overhand rights, they're hard to stop when they're thrown like that and thrown with such power. They are, really. Uh, that's one of my favorite punches, actually. You do throw yeah. that, yes. <laughs> I like that punch. Uh, you don't see it coming. You don't see it coming. It's not a straight punch. It's an overhand right. Uh, you don't see it coming, but that definitely that straight right hand that dropped to Salto right now, uh, that was it. That was uh, He actually bounced back from the ropes and got caught with that right hand. This young man has really had a long road to get to this point, Gus. So the tattoo artist from a family of boxers, including mom, dad, and sister, triumphant this evening here in Los Angeles, California, Lucas Matisse. And let's go into the ring where Jimmy Lennon Jr. is standing by. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number five. A referee in charge, Raul Kais, stops the contest upon suggestion of the corner. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is the new WBC Continental America's super lightweight champion, Lucas Matisse.